everybody, welcome back to the History Teacher. We're still in Elizabethan England, but this time we've moved forward a little bit. We're in 1559 this time. We're going to look today at Elizabeth's religious settlement. Now, the idea behind this settlement was that she wanted to make a religion that would suit both Catholics and Protestants, that everybody would be happy with. So, we're going to have a look today at how successful she was in doing that and what the religious settlement actually looked like. So, there's two parts to the religious settlement that you need to know about. One is the Act of Uniformity and the other is the Act of Supremacy. The Act of Supremacy is probably the most important one. It's the one that establishes Elizabeth as being Supreme Governor of the Church of England. Now, this means that... All clergy, all the royal officials have to swear an oath of allegiance to her. And this is really important because this really clearly sets the line between Catholic and Protestant. No longer are the clergy responsible to the Pope, they are now responsible to Elizabeth. Also sets up an ecclesiastical high commission. The plan behind that is to make sure that everybody in the church is doing as they're told and that Elizabeth's religious settlement is being followed. If any clergy were failing to follow this, well then they could be punished. The second part of this was the act of uniformity. And this this just set up the appearance of churches and how religious services were to be held. It required everybody to attend church and it laid out this is what churches should look like. Unlike Protestant churches, Elizabeth wanted her churches to remain really decorative. However, to please the Protestants, she still wanted the services to be carried out in English. So another important part of this was the royal injunctions. These were basically instructions to the clergy that said, this is what the Act of Uniformity says, this is what the Act of Supremacy says, and it also included instructions on how people should worship God and how they should conduct their religious services. She also introduced the Book of Common Prayer, which is still used today, which introduced a set church service, which was used in all church services. The clergy had to follow the prayer book wording during services or they would be punished. So she brought in all these new laws in 1559. Why? What was the point of it? Well, she was trying to create a settlement between the two regions that was inclusive, that involved everybody. Previous to this, the kingdom had gone through three monarchs who had tried to change the religion backwards and forwards between Catholic and Protestant. The ordinary person on the street was pretty unhappy. They just wanted to go to church, worship in their own way and get on with their life. They didn't want to keep getting involved in these debates with the king. This was at a time when heresy, crime of being the wrong religion, was linked to treason. So if you were the wrong religion at the time, you were also a traitor. And this was a really bad situation for some people. The wording of the new prayer book was a bit ambiguous. It meant that people could interpret it in different ways. The communion sacrament, which is referred to in the Book of Common Prayer, could be interpreted as the body and blood of Jesus, which is transubstantiation, which is Catholicism, and that would have appealed to Catholics, while for Protestants, they could view it as an act of remembrance. So, in that case, both parties were pretty happy. Elizabeth banned pilgrimages to fake miracles, which really pleased a lot of Protestants, because a lot of Protestants didn't like the way that some members of the Catholic Church were making money out of fake miracles. However, Catholic would have approved of the wording fake miracles, because it implies that there are some real miracles. Also, Catholics would have been pretty pleased with the uh, use of candles and crosses and all the vestments that the priests wore in the church services. And if you go and have a look at a Church of England church today, you will see that those changes that Elizabeth brought into place are still in place today. So how did this actually impact on people? Well, 8,000 out of about 10,000 clergy in England at the time pretty much just accepted the religious settlement. They carried on and just adapted. Many of Mary's bishops, the Catholic bishops that were appointed by Mary, were really angry about this and they opposed it fundamentally and they were removed from their office and replaced by Protestant bishops loyal to Elizabeth. The majority of ordinary people accepted the religious settlement and attended the church services even though many people continued to worship in the Catholic way in secret. The royal injunctions that I mentioned earlier stated that all clergy should teach royal supremacy, so teach everybody that Elizabeth Elizabeth is now head of the church. Report those who refuse to attend church to the Privy Council. That's Elizabeth's chief advisors. If you didn't go to church, you will find a whole week's wages. This was kind of fair because it meant that if you only earned a little bit each week, you only paid a little bit. And if you earned a lot, you paid a lot. Each church was required to have a copy of the Bible in English. This pleases the Protestants. Have a government license to preach. Now this is really important because it stops extremist protesters. So at both ends of the scale, there are extremist Protestants, generally known as Puritans, and extremist Catholics. So these people are preaching their extreme
team ideas and Elizabeth doesn't want this so she makes sure that everybody's got a license so that everybody is saying what she wants them to say. Clergy were also required to prevent pilgrimages, religious shrines and monuments to fake miracles and they were required to wear special clothes and vestments. So that's all of the detail for the religious settlement. This is really really important that you know this stuff. This is fundamental to many of the problems that Elizabeth has later on with Catholic countries and with Puritans and Catholics in the UK. Thanks very much for watching. I've been the history teacher. I'd love it if you scroll down into the description and follow me on Twitter or email me with any of your questions. Also subscribe on the link below. I'd also love to get your comments and questions and I look forward to seeing you next time.